Hi, my name is Anjan. I am Director of Sales at Impericon. We are a solar installer based out of New Jersey. And this is a video we are making in a collaboration with MySolarHome.us for new homeowners who are planning to go solar. We're going to be talking today about the financial benefits of solar, things like SREX, tax credits, etc. We then calculate the number of panels you need when you actually go solar. Look at your electric bill, check the number of panels you need, then we're going to compare different kinds of solar panels, inverters, and finally we're going to see the pros and cons of the different ways of going solar. You know, whether you want to do cash, you want to do financing, lease, PPA, etc. Let's get started with what are the requirements if you actually need to go solar. So the first thing is it's connected to the grid. That is, you will always acquire your power company, whether in, in Jersey it could be PSCNG or JCPL or in Pennsylvania, it could be Pico, or wherever you stay. If you're looking at home solar, this solar system will be connected to the power company. Now, for solar to work today in, in the United States, you need to be the homeowner and you need to own a single family home. That's when solar and home solar makes sense for you. The other condition that you need to know is your electric bill has got to be more than 100 bucks or more. If it's less than that, you know, you, you really aren't going to be saving so much or the investment is not worth your while. So that's pretty much the two things. Single family, uh, average bill of 100 bucks or more, and boom, you're good for home solar. Now, for those of you who have a townhome or who own a condo or live in an apartment, something a little smaller known as a solar generator will work for you. And I'm not going to be covering that in this video, but there is the, the website uh, where you can look these up. That's mysolarhome.us, best solar generators, or you can even look up a video on this channel. Click subscribe on this channel or go to this channel and there's a great video there which is very very popular a lot of people are, are seeing that video so that is only if you if your electric bills are you know less than 100 bucks do you want a, a townhome or a condo and it's not viable for you to put panels up and spend a, a big chunk of money so let's get started this is what we're going to be covering today we'll start with what the financial benefits of solar are. now there's lots of things in solar there's tax credits there's solar renewable energy credits we'll cover all of that once we know what the financials look like then i'll help you size the solar system i'll show you how to look at your own electric bill and then from that arrive at how many solar panels you need that's something a skill that you need to know because you don't want the solar companies who come to you to pull the wool over your eyes okay next once you know how many panels you got to find out what works for you you know which solar panels are better what about inverters micro inverters optimizers and it's not going to be very very technical but it's going to be enough to get you the best deal going around. Finally, we'll start looking at the deal. So in this video, you're going to go through the whole mechanics of buying a solar system, what to look for, how much money you're going to save, earn all of that. And you'll end up with the different options like cash, loan, PPA, lease, etc. So that's the agenda for today. Stick around. This is a useful video. You're going to learn a lot of stuff which you didn't know before. So let's start off with the financial benefits of solar. Now, the number one benefit, which I guess almost all of you know, is electric savings. Once you go solar, your electric bill goes down to zero. Now, what you got to know is you're always connected to the electric company. Even though your electric bill is going to go down to zero. And when I say it's going to go down to zero, you know, a good case is it's down to two or three bucks, but less than 10 bucks on average uh, in a year for sure. Solar, um, it's so you know, it doesn't work if the grid is not working. So if you have a power outage, your solar system is not going to be producing power. And I know this confuses the hell out of a lot of people. The sun's shining. Why the hell shouldn't I have solar powered electricity in my home? And the answer is simple. Yes, the sun's shining. It's making power. But if you continue to provide power to your home, that tends to backfit the grid. And if there is a utility guy on the pole outside somewhere, he's going to get the shock of his life. So by law, your solar system shuts off automatically. It's one of the requirements of solar. So your electric bill is going to go down to zero, but you're going to be still tight to the grid. And before you ask me what happens at night when there's no sun shining, how do I get power? At that point of time you're actually getting power from the utility company but the good news is you don't have to pay for the electricity because in the daytime your solar system is put in enough extra power into the grid which they give you credit for as a result you get power at night from the electric company but you don't have to pay anything for it so that's a long first point all right so that's number one electric savings your bill goes down to zero you save maybe what 1500 2000 bucks a year big fat savings and, and here's what it looks like um, you know 500 bucks before and 22 bucks afterwards so it's 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 an enormous amount of savings that you can get from solar and this can work for 
any size of bill okay home electric bills can go down to you know two bucks and three bucks business electric bills a little different but we're not talking about commercial solar here right so the other benefit that you have for solar is the tax credit you've heard of this and the way this works is whatever federal taxes you pay this year you can reduce that by 30 percent of the cost of the solar system so if your solar system costs 30 grand for example you're going to get back 30 percent of that nine thousand dollars are going to come back to you you can get that as a tax refund or you can you know stop paying a pay lower taxes during the year however you, you decide to take advantage but you will get that money back for some folks who are not able to say claim the entire nine thousand bucks straight off you can even break it up in the next two or three years i think it's up to five years now the, there's a little bit of bad news on the itc as it's called income tax credit that it's reducing to 26 percent in 2020 and 22 percent in 2021 this is the fall of 2019 when this video is getting made so right now 30 percent is good if you book your system anytime till the end of the year, you'll get this 30% um, tax credit. The next incentive is actually pretty much for New Jersey and Pennsylvania residents. Some other states have this too. For now, I'm going to be talking about SREX, uh, which are available in New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And this is how SREX work. We just talked about how your solar system in your home generates power and you save on your electric bill big saving now on top of that the state of jersey and pennsylvania gives you what are known as solar renewable energy credits for each 1000 kilowatt hours of power that you produce you get one s rec so that's the arrow pointed at the bottom it says s rec for every 1000 kilowatt hour now those s recs they're kind of like stock certificates or stocks you can sell them in the market today in new jersey they're selling for about 220 230 bucks so for someone you know, who's got an electric bill for about a hundred bucks or so, you'll make maybe nine SREX a year. And that's close to $1,800 of income every year from SREX. So it's a lot of money. Pennsylvania, the SREX are not that expensive, but they're good too. You get maybe five or 600 bucks you'll get from your SREX. So in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, you get money from SREX as an income, you get your tax credit, and you also get savings on your electric bill. So the financial benefits of solar are Awesome. So let's look at how how many solar panels do you actually need? Now, the first step is go grab a recent electric bill, right? And that electric bill is going to help you calculate your usage. Now, the unit of power is kilowatt hour, kWh. So if you look at your bill, and I'll show you that a little later right now where you can find that, you'll get a figure of your usage and you need the usage for the whole year. You divide that by 1.2 and that figure gives you your solar system size in watts, okay? And I know this is a lot of math, but then you divide that by a thousand to get your system size in kilowatt. So let's get down to actually doing this, okay? Now, quick caveat, kilowatts is not the same as kilowatt hours. Your system size, which we just calculated, we first calculated it in watts, then we converted it into kilowatts. That's always either in watts or in kilowatts, okay? So that is different from your usage, which is in kilowatt hours. So when you say system size and you say kilowatts, you are referring to basically the number of solar panels and the site. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Your usage or power production is in kilowatt hours. That means those solar panels on the left, they're gonna produce power and that power that they're gonna produce isn't gonna be in kilowatt hours. So a 10 kW system, for example, could produce 12,000 kilowatt hours in a year. A 5 kW system could produce say six and a half thousand kilowatt hours in a year. And the amount that those panels produce should depend on your usage. For example, when you look at your electric bill, you'll find out how much you use in a year. If you're using 10,000, so get enough 10,000 kilowatt hours, get enough panels to make sure that they make those 10,000 kilowatt hours and offset your electric bill completely. So that's how the kilowatts, they're not the same as kilowatt hours, but they're closely related, all right? So let's look at a couple of electric bills. Okay, we'll start with uh, Pico and JC Pico is in Pennsylvania. JCPL is in New Jersey. Now, these guys make life pretty easy. They always have a graph in it. And in the graph, they have a nice figure which says your last 12 months of usage. You can see that down there. It's 33,142 kilowatt hours for a year. Your usage is the first thing that you need to find out from electric bill is right down there. Uh, for this kind of bill, it's really easy. It's written down there, 33,000 kilowatt hours in the year. That's the number you need. Now, this is a Pico Electric Brill. Again, here, they're showing the total annual kilowatt hours usage down there, 19,108. Pretty easy, okay? So this is the first figure you need because from this figure, you'll be able to calculate the number of solar panels you need. We'll get to that 
very shortly. Let's look at another couple of bills. This is a PSCNG. PSCNG bills are a little more complicated, but hey, we can still work with it. So PSCNG bills, they don't give an annual usage. What they show is they show a graph of your usage by month. Now, the silly part of this graph is that they don't give you your monthly usage here. So those numbers for September, October, November, those are not usage numbers for that particular month. They are the average daily usage. That means if you look at where the arrow is pointing for February, the average daily usage every day in the month of February was around 50 kilowatt hours every day. So now we need to find out the kilowatt hours of usage for the whole year. So one way to do it is to estimate an average daily usage for the year. So now we have the daily usage for September, for October, November, and if you see they you know go all the way from say 25 to maybe even 75 or 100. So we got to make an estimate of what works best as an average. So I drew a line in the middle. Looks like kind of 50 is is what the average usage is like for the whole year and it's okay if you're you know if you overestimate a bit here we, we're just trying to get um, a handle on usage for the year it doesn't have to be a, a hundred percent accurate number so 50 is what the usage is per day and from this it's easy to calculate the usage for a year multiply that by 360 so from this bill the average usage was 50 a day multiply by 365 and you're at 18,250 kilowatt hours a year. Great, so you, you've looked at three electric bills right now, and from each of them, we, we either looked at the graph, which are the actual numbers, and if the electric company is good enough to tell you what they use every year, great. Alternatively, you could even call up the electric company and ask them what's your last 12 months of usage, okay? So you'll get the number. So, so now that you know your usage, how do you calculate the number of solar panels that you need? Okay, so I've got an example here. So this is an electric bill. It's a Pico electric bill. And if you notice, this one's an easy one. So they have the annual. So now when we know the usage, you have to divide that by 1.2. We divide 19,108 by 1 1.2 with a calculator. You come to 15,923 watts. That is what is known as system watt. It's basically the number you need to calculate your number of panels. It's 15,923 watts. Now, panels come in different sizes. You have a Silfab 310. 10 watt panel, you have a Panasonic 330 watt panel, or you could have a QCell 325 watt panel. So the each panel has a watts associated with. Now that we know the total watts that we need, 15,923, we can calculate the number of panels. Straightforward, you just divide the number of watts by the panel watts. So in case you're thinking of getting Silfab 310 watt panels, you divide the 15,923 by 310, that gives you 51.36. So you round that up. So you need 52 panels. 52 Silfab 310 watt panels will generate 19,108 or a little more than that of power. And you're good. So you need 52 panels and you need a system size of about 15,923 watts or 15.92 kilowatts. Now, if you think of some other panel, for example, let's say a Panasonic 330 watt panel, calculation is again similar. Just divide the 15,923 by 330 you come to 48.25, rounded up 49 panels. So depending on the type of panels you finally choose, this calculation tells you how many panels you need. Now, there is a, a big caveat. This calculation is only good for New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania area. Now, the reason that that's, that's so is because, you know, the amount of sunlight you get in New Jersey, Pennsylvania is different from the amount of sunlight you get in say California. So in California, to produce 19,000 kilowatt hours, you will need less number of panels. In New Jersey and, 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 and Pennsylvania, you need 52 panels for the Silfab 310 or 49 for the Panasonic 330. But in California, because they get so much more sun, the calculation would be maybe you just need 45 panels or 44 panels. So there, the division, that initial division that you do on your usage by 1.2, you have to divide by another factor. So I am not talking about that here. Use these calculations only if you're in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. For other markets, the, 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 the number that you divide by would be different. All right, so now we, we found out what we need. We need 40 panels, 30 panels, whatever we need. Now we know what we want. Now which panels are we gonna choose? So I'm gonna make this simple. There's a lot of misinformation in the market, but here are two or three things that you need to know and you'll be guaranteed you've got a top-notch panel. Choose a tier one panel, okay? A tier one panel is, you know, all panels are either classified tier one, tier two, tier three, etc. Tier one panels are the 
top of the line panels. They guaranteed very high performance. They have been passed by labs in the US, passed by labs in, in Europe for performance. A tier one panel says it's going to make 300 watts. It is guaranteed to make 300 watts. The other very important consideration of a tier one company or a tier one panel is that the company is financially very strong. Huge structures, manufacturing facilities, uh, access to raw materials, all those are looked at. And so when, when somebody is, cla is, is classified a tier one, you've got a really good company making really good panels. So now the top tier one manufacturers, you may not know of all of them, but I've just named a few here, Silfab, LG, Panasonic, Hanwha, Trina, Solaria, and there are, uh, there are many more. So any one of these companies is great to buy your panels from. The other thing, the most important second consideration is choose a panel efficiency of 18.8% or more. If you choose, if these two things are, you keep them in mind, you are golden. You don't need to worry about anything because all tier one panels, they all have very similar warranties, they have very similar performance characteristics. It is really the difference between a, a Silfab, an LG, a Panasonic and a Hanwha panel is very marginal. The difference would be, you know, to give an analogy, it'll be like the difference between say different Lexus models of cars. So you might have a low end Lexus, you might have a mid end Lexus and you might have a high end Lexus, but they're not so different from each other. They're all Lexus is coming from, you know, the top notch uh, uh, cars. Same thing with tier one panels. As long as they're 18.8% efficiency or more and they're tier one, you're great. All of them will have 25 year warranties. Their performance after 25 years is guaranteed. It varies from 80% to 90%. So like I said, it's great performance, but there is a little small differences between the, the, the different panels. And here's uh, you know a slide where I show you how little there is to choose between different panels. I've looked at three different panels, okay? First on top, I have the LG panels. In the middle, I have the Silfab panel. And at the bottom, I have the Panasonic panels. So if you notice the LG panel, if you go to the gray on top on the right, it says LG 335 N1 CA5. So that's an LG 335 watt panel. So panel efficiency is 19.6%. On the right, at LG 330 panel, 19.3% efficiency. The 325 watt panel, 19. Below this, on the second row, you have Silfab. That particular model has got an efficiency of 19.3%. Panasonic models, 19.7, 19.4. So like I said, if you look at these as, you know, mo uh, as models of Lexus cars, you know, the guys at 19%, they're the lower end Lexuses. The, the, in the middle, 19.3, 19.4, they're the middle end. And in 19.6, 19.7, they're the higher end Lexus. So there is very little to choose between them in terms of quality and performance. The difference between, say, a lower efficiency, 19% and a 19.7% panel would be that the power guarantee after 20 years, that, you know, after 25 years, one of these panels will make 90% of their rated power. The other one would make 84%. So... If you're willing to pay a little bit of premium for that, great. I, you know, the Panasonic, say 19.7% panel is five or 10% more expensive than the Silfa panel. That's something, you know, I can live with that. Okay, I pay that premium. But usually the, the difference in prices between these panels or when you buy a solar system based on these panels is in the region of, you know, 15 to 20% higher prices, which I think is a bit much. As long as your panels are tier one as long as the efficiency is you know 19 percent or more you're good choose based on the best deal. that's on solar panels tier one 18.8 19 percent or more and you're good look for the best prices do not worry about the panel brands as long as they are tier one okay some caveats you know people think that higher watt panels are better that a 300 watt panel is worse off than a 370 watt panel that is not true okay the when you compare panels, you got to compare the efficiencies of the panel. The reason a 370 watt panel produces more power than a 310 watt panel is most likely because the panel is larger. So many of the higher watt panels are actually, there's something known as 72 cell versus 60 cell. Panels are made of, you know, silicon cells. So the number of cells, if you have more cells, the panels are bigger, okay? So if you have more cells, makes more power. So makes sense that, you know, a 370 or a 400 watt panel is larger than a 330 watt panel. But in terms of efficiencies, as long as they are more than 18.9%, you can choose a 300 watt panel or a 370 watt panel, you're good. Difference, as I said, would be that the 370 watt panel will be larger than the 310 watt panel. So when you're choosing between two panels, choose on efficiency. Do not choose on panel watt size. 
okay a brand x 310 watt panel might actually have higher efficiency than a brand y 380 watt panel so that 310 watt panel is actually a better buy so it's important to know that all right okay let's go to the next one caveat number two let's say you're looking at a 330 watt panel and you've got three choices a Silfab, a panasonic or an lg which one do you want to buy? What you got to know is that even though the efficiencies between the three of them might be slightly different, say, say the LG panel is 19.6, the Panasonic is 19.4, and the Silfab is 19.2. Three panels, since they are all rated at 330 watts, they will all produce 330 watts regardless of efficiency. The reason they have different efficiencies could be, or is rather, that the panel sizes are slightly different. A more efficient panel is slightly smaller than the less efficient panel. But the moment it's rated for a particular watt, it's going to make that much power. So if you've got a choice between the three panels, they all make 330 watts, choose the one with the best price. All right. It doesn't make sense for you to always choose based on the brand. Tier one all the brands are great. The only time you should look at really high efficiency panels is if you have a problem of roof area because like I said, higher efficiency panels, they take up less space. They are smaller. So if you've got a constraint in terms of I can only put 20 panels on my roof, for example, then you might as well choose the most high efficiency 20 panels. You'll get the most output out of them. Okay, some caveats on the looks of panels. There are two primary looks of panels which people, they don't talk about too much, but you should know. Now, the ones on top, the ones with silver lines and silver stars in the background, these are known as black on white panels. And these, these panels could be from LG, they could be from Panasonic, they could be from Silfab, they could be from Hanwha, they could be from anybody. All the brand manufacturers make black on white panels. Similarly, the panels on the bottom, which are the black on black panels, all the manufacturers also have black on black panels. The price difference between them may be marginal, they may not be there. But for you, if you're thinking of putting panels in the front of your home, you probably are looking at doing the black and black panels. They look better, look cleaner. I'm going to show you a few different panel looks so you know what they look like. So this is a Panasonic, a roof with Panasonic panels. Okay, These are the most high efficiency panels in the market today. Uh, another brand that's very, very good is SunPower. And they, they really you know, charge a huge premium for their, you know, their brand recognition. I usually don't advise Panasonic panels unless, you know, you've got a very small roof. I mean, they, they're just too pricey for too little. Difference. These are LG panels. These are slightly better priced than the, the uh, Panasonic's. They're still expensive, but, you know, very, very good panels. Now, Silfab panels is my panel of choice when we sell it in, in New Jersey, Pennsylvania. These are very high efficiency. We just looked at them. They were 19.3% efficient, efficient panels. They're very good looking, black on black, real great value. So, but, you know, like I said, don't get stuck to your panels. Choose the panel you like, the look you like, the efficiency you like, and you're good. You are not going to make a, make a mistake if you choose any tier one panel. All right, so next we get into inverters. Okay, the inverters are a very, very important part of your solar system. Your solar panels are producing DC power and you use AC power in your home. So you, you need the inverter to convert that DC power from the panels into AC for your home. So one of the choices which has been very popular for a long time is known as a string inverter or a central inverter. There is a difference between the two. We won't get into that right now, but this is one of the choices available to you uh, for an inverter. Now, when you choose one of these inverters, it is just one big box which goes onto the side. The panels on top, they all get connected together get into a single conduit, which is, you know, you get DC coming to that, into this big box on the side of your wall inside your garage. So this big box is your central inverter or the string inverter. This is a technology you should try to avoid because the problem with these inverters are if this unit fails, all your 30 or 40 panels are down. They're not going to work. You've got zero power going. Okay. The other thing is these are big and bulky. They work really well when all the panels get equal amount of sunlight that, you know, a problem with solar panels is 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 how they are designed on top. When you when you use a cent central inverter, you got to worry about how the panels are stringed together. That means you have eight panels which are together in one row. Then you have seven panels in another string or row. It may not be a row, but it could even be an L, for example. But it's all connected together. So when you have stringed inverters 
and you have panels coming into your central inverter, the performance of one panel can affect the performance of all the other panels. In this. A little bit of shade on one panel and boom, that whole row or 10, 12 panels will produce very little power. All the other panels get affected. So string inverters or central inverters, you just should avoid these like the plate. They're really good for commercial. They don't, don't get me wrong that these are good for commercial, but for residential, not a good choice. The best choice in my opinion is the micro inverter for solar on your homes. The micro inverter is that little guy on the left. These get connected to each individual panel. So the picture on the right, if you're seeing the silver little boxes on the left, that's the micro inverter that's fixed to the rail. And on top of the micro inverter, we put the panel. So for each panel on the right, there is a, there's a micro inverter underneath it, which you're not able to see right. But what this does is that each panel, the DC is converted into AC, and then the AC comes all the way down from your home, down to your home where you can use it. There are no more boxes in this design. That's it, you have 30 panels, you'll have 30 micro inverters. They come down into your home, you've got AC coming in, no DC, you wanna add panels later on. Very easy with micro inverters, plug and play. This is our choice, our number one choice for micro inverters and the ones which are the best are end phase. Use them on 95% of our installs. This is the best choice. It's open, easy, a regular electrician can work on this install later, something happens, you lose a panel, lose a micro inverter, you can swap it with anything else in the market. Very flexible. The next, our number two uh, recommendation, this is also a very good architecture. It's got a few things which we don't like. This is known as the optimizer. Just like the micro inverters, the optimizers, the single units, those black little boxes in the bottom, they go behind each panel. So solar panel has, a mic has, has an optimizer behind. The difference between the optimizer and the uh, micro inverter that we talked about earlier is that the optimizers do not convert the DC power into AC. They still continue to generate DC, but what they do is they make sure that each panel is working at its most efficient, which is exactly what the micro inverters do. Both micro inverters and optimizers are great for, for homes which have got, they get a little less sunlight in particular areas. Some panels are get more sun, others get less sun. So in those kind of scenarios, micro inverters and optimizers, they shine because each individual panel is isolated. Each is optimized to make the most power. So both optimizers and end phase micro inverters, they do the job really well. Now the part that we don't like about optimizers is that big box on the right, which is again a string inverter, something that we discussed earlier. Since DC comes out of the optimizers it has to be converted to ac and there you have it you need a second unit you need that big central inverter or string inverter at the end of the optimizer so if the string inverter fails that big box on the right fails all your panels fail all 30 panels are down that's something which can never happen with the with an end phase micro inverter solution but with the solar optimizer solution if the optimizer fails you are same it's the same you know one panel is down 29 others will be working fine you're good that's why it's our second choice it's got some great features, but it's got a couple of things which make us a little wary of them. This one is really preferred by many, many solar installers because this is cheaper, okay? We think it's it's, a, it's okay to spend a little bit more. In fact, when Empericon sells solar systems, we charge the same price for, for both of them. Take that hit of the extra price because we know this is something which is better in terms of serviceability for you as a customer and for us also as a company. Okay, with optimizer solution, the, the company which does this is known as Solar Edge, and you're kind of stuck with them. If something goes wrong, you have to get stuff from Solar Edge. That optimizer fails, you have to get a new Solar Edge optimizer. That that uh, central inverter fails on the right, you have to go looking for the same model from them. Whereas with the micro inverters from end phase, you can get a micro inverter from some other brand, you can get a panel from some other brand. You you are not stuck to them. If something happens to that company, you're okay. It makes AC power. Whereas this optimizer solution makes DC power, it's a DC architecture, it's homeowner unfriendly. So we make this our second best choice, but it would rather that you go with end phase micro inverters. Okay, so what's left now? What's left is known as the balance of system. That's the racking which goes on your roof. You can see that they look like railway tracks. So these are end phase micro inverters that you see on the racking. All they're all connected together, grounded, bonded, and then they come in through, the wiring goes in through that right on the bottom right of the image, there's a box that's known as a solid 
box where all the wires from the panels they come and get through together here they're consolidated they go through either into your attic or through a conduit if you don't have an attic and they go and join up with your your main panel uh, down below depending on the architecture if you're doing uh, an optimizer of course they'll first go meet with that big inverter in the middle and then go into your main panel with n phase microinverters you don't have all those big boxes all right so this is how the racking goes on on your roof if you see these are connected to your roof by specialized flashing the thing in the bottom the silver flashing at the bottom with, with the l bracket and the bolt inside this is a specialized system design they've got three layers of vacuum sealing inside them uh, we use a brand known as pv quick mount so they do penetrate the the roof it goes into your rafter but that hole is so secure that it's not going to leak in 100 in fact lifetime warranties of, of your roofs are not they're not affected by solar panels now as long as you're working with a good installer solar never ever causes a leak the systems are over engineered you are good to go uh, reviews that are done by your township they worry more about your panels flying off your roof rather than your panels causing leaks or you know damaging your roof finally we come to vendor selection who do you work with when you you finally you you do know everything you need to know you probably have a good handle of the solar panels you want whether you want micro inverters or you want optimizer choose your 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 vendor it's the same simple stuff go for guys who've got a lot of good reviews online who've been around for a little bit the experience counts in this business okay if you've got four or five years of experience you've got lots of good reviews and you use you know make the same rec recommendations that i'm making to you right now that you're using top-notch panels using either optimizers or, or micro inverters who have their own crews and speak to them the moment you speak to you know individuals from a from a company you, you'll know immediately what kind of credibility these guys have people who know their business they come across with great credibility and you'll know the installer you like we work on a marketplace known as energy sage could look look at this because they they do a very very good job of getting top-notch vendors into the same place so if you put your project or your home into energy sage you'll get a bunch of very very good installers coming in and bidding on your system so pretty much uh, a, a good place to to start with if you uh, you know haven't yet found somebody okay all right so now we get into the actual deal what do you want to do you know the options when you go to buy the first option that we look at is purchase this is your best option it gives you the best returns and it's you know to, to give you an idea of how much you're going to spend if you want to purchase your system and, and when we say cash i mean you can purchase the system by paying a check also okay so in the new in the tri-state area especially in new jersey pennsylvania you know you'll have to spend about fourteen thousand dollars to offset a hundred dollar a month electric bill so that should give you an idea so it's solar even though it's not cheap it's a great investment because you will make your money back in between four to eight years depending on which state you're in number one your electric bill will go down to zero number two in new jersey pennsylvania you're going to earn income from srx which we talked about earlier for every thousand kilowatt hours you earn one s srx so supposing you have a system which makes twelve thousand kilowatt hours in a year you will earn 12 srx from them and that's income of twenty seven hundred and sixty dollars in new jersey or in 480 bucks in pennsylvania that's because srx prices are a little different in jersey a little different in pennsylvania so you got your bill which goes down to close to zero plus you got money coming in from srx and of course not to forget the 30 percent tax rebate so if your system let's say cost thirty thousand you get back nine thousand as a federal tax refund you know let's say you looked at your bill and you found that you need twelve thousand kilowatt hours a year so based on that you did the math earlier divide the twelve thousand by 1.2 you came to ten thousand watts is the system size or 10 kw so we're not, now looking at buying a 10 kW system which will produce about 12,000 kilowatt hours a year your electric bill will go down from 150 to five dollars or less you know to make the calculations easy let's say you save 150 bucks a month that's a hundred and uh, that's 1800 bucks a year on top of that in Jersey and Pennsylvania you will make money from SREX since the system produces 12,000 kilowatt hours that's 12 SREX it's producing you'll make 2760 bucks a year in New Jersey 480 bucks a year in Pennsylvania SREX are around around 200 bucks in New Jersey around 40 bucks each in 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 Pennsylvania so between New Jersey and, and Pennsylvania if you add up all your savings it's 4560 bucks every year you save in Jersey after going solar or 20 to 80 in Pennsylvania this is for somebody who's, who's got usage of 12,000 kilowatt hour all right so how much will you pay for your solar system the best and the only way to really compare different prices is what is known as a price per watt so prices range from a per watt price of 2.5 to 3.2 dollars per watt in new jersey in the tri-state area okay so for our example i'm going to assume that you know we're in the middle 
$2.80 for a 10kW system. It's pretty easy to calculate the price. 10kW system or 10,000 watts is the system size. Multiply that by the price per watt, $1.280. 10,000 into $1.280 your price is $28,000 for that system. Now let's look at how much you'll save if you buy the system. So, you know, I this calculation I've shown you is for somebody who's, you know, who needs a 10KW system or somebody who has a bill of about 150 bucks a month in, in the tri-state area. So if, if your bill is more or less than that, use this rule of thumb. It's, it's an approximate, but about 14,000 or, or, or so for each 100 bucks of electricity that you want to offset, you'll need to spend about 14,000 bucks. So if you've got a $300 a month electric bill, you'll have to spend about 42,000. 14,000 into three. 14,000 per 100 bucks of electricity offset. Similarly for a $150 a month bill, 14,000 for the first 100 and 7,000 for the second 100. So that's 28,000. Maybe that calculation is wrong. All right. Now, how long does it take for you to get your money back? Our example, our system cost was 28,000. Immediately you get back 30% as a tax credit. That's 8,400 bucks in your pocket. So your net out of pocket really is 28,000 minus that 8,400. You're gonna be spending 19,600 on your solar system. Now you're gonna be making 4,560 every year in New Jersey or 2280 every year in Pennsylvania. And how are you gonna be making those savings? Number one, because your electric bill goes away. And number two, you're gonna make money from those SRECs, right? So you're gonna make 4,500 in New Jersey, 20, 2300 in Pennsylvania and you spend 19,600. So how much time is it going to take you to get your money back? If you divide 19,600 by 4560 for New Jersey, that's just 4.3 years. You got your money back in just 4.3 years. Amazing investment. Pennsylvania, 8.6 years because you're saving a little less money. But you, you get the drift, right? You're spending a big chunk of money, but you got your money back in four and a half or in eight years. And you will have another 25 years of savings because solar panels continue to work for 25, 30 years. Your electric bill will continue to be close to zero for another 20, 25 years. Those savings will continue going on there. You will continue to earn money on your SREX going forward. It is a really good investment if you go solar and you buy your system. Cash is king. It's the best. Now, you could buy it with financing too. Now, when you buy it with financing, remember that the solar costs, system costs will go up. So the same system which costs 28,000 is going to be 8 to 15 percent more expensive because the finance companies they tack on something known as deal of fees. All right, but it still makes sense because interest rates are low 1.99 percent to 3.99 percent. Okay, so even though you're paying a little more for your solar system because you're not buying cash, since the interest rates are very low, the monthly installments are very low. They will more than be offset by your electric savings and your SREC earnings. So if, you're, if your loan payments are 150 bucks, you probably will be earning back 150 or 180 from your SREC, plus you will save another 100 bucks on your electric bill. You'll end up every month making money not spending money. So financing, uh, purchasing a solar system through financing is great. You should consider it. If you don't want to pay those big dealer fees upfront, look at doing, you know, financing on your own using maybe your own home equity line of credit. Purchasing is financing is great. It's a choice number two. Our choice number three is something that is not very common. We offer it as a solution in New Jersey. It's called purchasing with buyback. What we do is we buy back the tax credit and the SREX from the customer. So that same system which costs 28,000 bucks, we will offer you money for your SREX and your tax credit and pay you upfront. So instead of paying us 28,000, you just pay us $8,400 and the system is yours, but we keep the SREX and we keep the tax credits. That's why we call it a purchase with a buyback. So this is another way of going solar without spending too much upfront. You don't wanna spend 28,000, this is the third best way of, of doing solar purchase with a buyback. But unfortunately, this is not available in every state. It's there in New Jersey. You're from New Jersey and you want this. You can always give me a call, or send me an email. My details are down there on, on every slide here, as you can see. Now, final options are the lease and the PPA. And let me tell you, we hate them. This is basically renting your system for 20 to 25 years. You don't get the tax credits. You don't get the SREX. You have to make monthly payment. The difference between the lease and the PPA is simple. The lease has a fixed monthly payment, whereas in the PPA, the monthly payment changes. You pay more in the summer and less in the winter, but, and, and it depends on usage. So, you know, some people like that. But at the end of the day, when you add up all your payments for the lease and you add up all your payments for your PPA, they're both the same. It's how you skin the cat. So fixed every month or variable, PPA versus the lease. Both are 
in my opinion, really bad options. You're stuck for 20 to 25 years. Many of these leases and PPS have an escalator. You pay more as time goes by. Your savings are ridiculous. This is something you should stay away from. The only lease that we think are similar to a lease product is the new Tesla rental. Tesla has introduced this service very recently. They have no long-term contracts, which is great. Their fixed monthly payments or rentals are a little high. But hey, if you don't have the money in your pocket to buy a solar system, this is something you can consider. They will charge you when you cancel uh, a one-time 1500 bucks charge as of now. This, this is, we're talking about September of 2019. So this is an option which, you know, it's just a shade better than the lease or the PPS, not much. Go for this route if you can't do a purchase. So that pretty much brings me an end to this presentation. You've seen the whole solar process from beginning to end, how to look at your electric bill, how to find out your usage, how much of a solar system do you need, what kind of panels, inverters. I hope you liked what you saw. I'll be making more videos collaborating with mysolarhome.us. Hopefully you'll be seeing them later too. I'll make a video about a commercial too. Um, let me wish you the very best of luck with your solar project. Do write to me or call me if you have questions. I hope you enjoy this video. Have a great, great day.